Hi everyone, welcome to this video where I'll be going through the top 10 Python modules that I think you should learn or at least know about in 2022. This list is going to be unranked, so the ordering doesn't really mean anything, but the goal for me with this list is to try to cover as wide range of a field as possible, uh, all the way from machine learning to web development. And as a result of that, I won't include two modules from the same category if they are too similar, because I want to limit this list to just 10 items, which I feel is already a lot to have on your plate. I'm also focused on larger modules and frameworks, which will help you deliver a complete project from end to end. So this list won't include modules like NumPy or PyTest, which although they are very good and very important packages in themselves, uh, they usually, I feel they play more of a supporting role in a project. So with that out of the way, let's get started. The first module is Fast API. This is a framework for building Python web APIs. This means turning your Python functions into a RESTful HTTP endpoint. APIs like these are extensively used across all type of tech stacks, whether it's web development, enterprise software, machine learning, finance, or game development. To use Fast API, all you have to do is write your function, then annotate it with a decorator. Now, when you run this Python program, you can use an HTTP endpoint to call the function. And if you want to publish it for production use, you can either deploy it to a server using pretty much any cloud provider, or you can even host it as a serverless function, like on AWS Lambda. The next framework on this list is Django. Now, if you need a web framework that can do more than fast API, then Django is the heavyweight option. It pretty much offers an entire tech stack rolled into one framework, allowing you to build a production grade web application from start to finish. Competitors in other languages include frameworks like Ruby on Rails or Laravel. And like those other examples, it's a traditional backend web framework in that the actual HTML pages are generated and transmitted to the user from the server side. This unfortunately also means that Django does require a server to run. So unlike with fast API, there's no serverless way to architect a Django project, which consequently means it's harder to scale horizontally. It's also not as widely adopted or dominant as some other web frameworks in different languages, such as React or ASP.NET. But despite all of these setbacks, Django is still an excellent choice for Python users. Its key strength being in that it allows you to develop an end-to-end -end product very quickly just from this one framework alone. Well-known platforms that were built on Django, or at least at some point in their history, include Instagram, Spotify, and YouTube. Number three is TensorFlow. As a runtime, Python dominates the machine learning and AI space. And there are many high quality frameworks within this category, but the most popular one is TensorFlow, which is developed and maintained by Google. Other notable frameworks include Keras and PyTorch, which is my personal favorite. But from what I understand, these frameworks all tend to have similar capabilities in that they give you tools and functions to one, build a neural network model, two, feed it with data. This process is usually called training or fitting, and three, use the trained model on new input, or also known as inference. The frameworks themselves aren't difficult to use. The functions and modules are pretty straightforward. The real barrier in machine learning, however, is actually understanding all the concepts and math behind your neural network. So knowing what things like layers, features, and activation functions are, and how to apply them. Applications of TensorFlow include things like Google Translate, text-to-speech generation, and AI for self-driving cars. The fourth module on this list is Pandas. If you want to do anything with data, you won't get far without running into Pandas. This module gives you an extremely powerful set of tools to work with tabular data, like CSVs and spreadsheets, or time series data, like weather records or financial market data. You can use it to visualize the data, do bulk operations on it, modify rows and columns, and much more. Pandas is used extensively in any data-heavy field like machine learning, statistics, finance, and enterprise software. Number five, matplotlib. If you want to visualize data on a graph, then matplotlib is currently the most popular solution. You can turn your data, think lists, dictionaries, or matrices, into line graphs, bar charts, heat maps, and pretty much anything else you can think of. What I really especially like about matplotlib is that it is super easy to pick up. You can probably generate your first graph in less than 10 minutes. But underneath the surface, it packs a ton of functionality for how you can visualize and present your data. This module is also extremely popular in any data-heavy field, 
including machine learning and AI, where it is commonly used to visualize a neural network's training progress. Number six, Pillow. Python Imaging Library, also known as Pillow or PIL, is a framework that lets you work with images. So that means loading images, creating images, modifying color channels, saving images, that kind of thing. If images are a core component of your project, then Pillow is a great module to learn. For example, you could use it to pre-process image data for machine learning, use it as an API to generate thumbnails from text input, or automate tasks like resizing and cropping images uploaded to your application. Number seven is OpenCV. OpenCV is the dominant module for computer vision in Python. As you can probably guess, that's what the letters CV stand for. Like Pillow, it is a module designed around working with images. But unlike Pillow, which focuses on image manipulation and editing, OpenCV focuses on understanding the meaning of an image. Unsurprisingly, its applications are closely related to machine learning. For example, things like face detection, object tracking, and image classification. Number eight is Pygame. Pygame is a game development framework with a graphical user interface. And although it's not really powerful enough to make commercial games, it is still an excellent framework for prototyping and for learning. There's actually not a lot of Python frameworks that let you render an interactive, real-time graphical interface. So Pygame stands out to me because it lets you work with a lot of those type of concepts without having to go as far as learning something like Unity or Unreal Engine. Number nine is PyQt. PyQt is also a graphical user interface framework. Its focus though is in building cross-platform desktop applications. The library gives you widgets and tools to construct an entire UI with things like buttons, lists, text boxes, and so on. And since it is cross-platform, you can expect your application to work on Linux, Windows, and Mac OS. Notable examples of PyQt applications include Spider, which is a Python IDE, and early iterations of Dropbox. And last but not least, number 10 is Selenium. Selenium is a web automation tool or a web driver. It is a virtual browser that you can use to interact with regular websites, for example, filling in forms, moving the mouse and clicking buttons, and gathering data from the website. The main use case for Selenium is actually for writing automated tests for your front end, but you can also use it to write bots or tools that automate the interaction with a real website. And that's it for the top 10 Python modules that I recommend you learning for building your next project in 2022. Just in case you're interested, some other modules I've considered for this list include Flask, Beautiful Soup, Kivi, and Ursina, and a couple of others as well. If you have experience with any of these frameworks, or if there's other good frameworks you know that you think deserve to be on this list, then please share your thoughts in the comments below. Otherwise, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching, and hopefully I'll catch you in the next one.